All right, guys, today I want to show you how to make any battery powered Halloween decoration into a motion censored Halloween decoration. It's very easy and you only need a couple of things. Let me show you. First off, you need a, an external battery pack. You need, of course, your motion sensor. You need some wire, a hot glue gun, and some tape. Also need some cutters or a knife. And optional is a multimeter to make sure the positive and negative is correct. All right, so first thing first, you will, you will need an external battery pack. Uh, most uh, animated Halloween decorations that I found uh, typically use uh, three AA batteries. That's about four and a half to five volts. Uh, I found this one on Amazon and it comes uh, really uh, conveniently with an on and off switch. And it comes with two wires coming out, a negative and a positive wire. So sometimes these battery packs, uh, positive and negative is turned around. So uh, a lot of these times, these decorations are very sensitive to uh, if the power is backwards, you could fry the electronics. So I always use a multimeter and I just probe the positive and negative side of the terminal uh, to make sure that uh, it is giving me a positive volts. Uh, so if I put positive, positive, and negative, negative on multimeter, it gives me a positive volts or positive five volts. If it becomes negative five volts, that means these two are switch. You switch them. So <clears throat> just a good thing to check because uh, that has happened to me. These wires have been crossed and it will fry your electronics sometimes. And of course, you'll need your uh, motion sensor. This is called a PIR sensor switch. Okay, so... Um, you need it to be able to run uh, at least five volts and it will have two wires that come out of this uh, you will have a wire that goes in so that comes from your battery pack to in to power your motion sensor and your device and then it will um, sense a motion and then it will pass that voltage to the out which will go to your device so first thing to do is uh, get your external battery pack put your positive and negative black is usually negative red is positive into your uh, in um, your input of uh, into your wire switch. So just unscrew these, insert the wires, screw them down tightly so that way they don't come out. So that's your in, and then your out. Your out will then of course go out to your device. So same thing, just get some wire. You might have some scrap wire or something. Uh, typically the way I you know make sure I usually color code mine. Usually I have black to be the negative and any colored wire that I have to be the power switch. So that's just easy for me to not get them confused. And then all you have to do is uh, put them into the device and run them to the device. So the way these boxes work is typically so that the spring is using the negative side and then the flat side is the positive side. Uh, so um, usually I just touch them to the device. I turn on the device and then I turn on my box. And then I just see if it turns on. I just touch the wires to the negative side of this and the positive side. And the way these work is cross. Uh, and then if that doesn't work, typically then it works the other way. So if this didn't work, I would put the negative here and I would put the positive up here. Again, they work in an X type pattern. Once I figured out that worked, I used my hot glue gun and I just hot glued the negative wire to there and a positive wire to, to there. And then, what I typically do is I just get some tape and then I just tape this battery pack over that or you can hot glue it whatever the case um, but you want easy access in order to change out these batteries so typically I just tape it that way I can remove the tape change out the batteries and then tape it back uh, so I like to use this uh, duct tape and that's pretty much it and the way you kind of uh, work this is on your PIR switch some of them will come with two dials some ones only one uh, this one only has one, which is an interval timer. Some will come, some will come with a second dial, which is uh, your sensitivity, so how sensitive, so how far or close away uh, this thing will actually activate. Uh, so this one again is only uh, interval. Um, so if I was to turn this clockwise, I would put like a little screwdriver in there, turn it clockwise. That'll shorten the interval between it turning on and off. Uh, if I turn it counterclockwise, the longer between the intervals, and I think the shortest is five seconds, and the longest like is thirty seconds. Um, 
again this all depends on you know some some things talk so this one doesn't talk he just moves he just crawls around some of them do talk so for instance if you set it on the five second time uh, and it's saying a sentence or something it might cut off mid sentence uh, then you know it would need to you need to increase the time interval uh, so once it um, completes that time interval it will shut power off to the device and then basically anything that comes in its path and it senses it then it'll turn on again and do the cycle all over again so that's pretty much it. All you to do is put the sensor wherever you want it. So in our case, we're gonna have them in our front yard uh, next to some tombstones. Uh, so we're gonna probably put that sensor in the grass or on a tombstone somewhere where people can't see it. And as soon as someone walks by, yep, see, that's it. It sensed me, now it activated it. So again, that's how you turn any battery operated Halloween decoration into a motion sensor Halloween decoration. All right guys, have fun, thanks. About 15 seconds. Okay. <laughs> you see, I had the licensor right there, right in her car.